all call signs 32 echo 32 uh, this is 32 and we're going to go ahead with this show of course as of uh, 1 a 7 uh, 3 zero hours i want you to focus on obvious uh, hard targets as well as any uh, uh, fields where anybody will be trying to creep up and wadis over I just think some people are, are born for it. Some people are born to be a doctor. Some people are born to be vets or whatever. We're warriors. We, that's what we do. We're good at it. A lot of it's our training, but a lot of it's who we are. First, second World War, Korea, you know. Canadians always shine. So I guess it's our turn. signed on we've said we'll take the lead and we'll show you how to fight so uh and you're in the front lines yes but don't tell my mother that Because we're just the best there is, so you'd be crazy to fuck with us. There were 2,300 Canadians serving in Afghanistan while we were there. Fewer than a thousand leave the base to patrol this moonscape of dust and danger. They call it going outside the wire. We spent October with the troops at Kandahar Airfield, in Panjwe, a traditional Taliban stronghold, and in Spin Boldak, a forward operating base on the Pakistan border. A convoy from Kandahar Airfield to Spin Boulder. Inside the armored vehicle, it's cramped, dark, and uncomfortable. I'm told if there's an attack, I'll be thrown in a ditch and just stay down. After about two hours, we arrive at Spinbolduk, or forward operating base Kostel, a sleepy frontier post. Veterans of battle are regrouping, resting, healing. They lost over half the platoon due to injuries. There was one death. And um, right now we're in a reconstitution phase. We just got our replacements on the ground. So SPIN is also a training center. That's not a tank. It's a light armored vehicle, a lav. The soldiers call them boats. Later in Panjwe, I would see lavs cruise over the sand. Not here. This is driving school. A lot of young guys, a lot of very inexperienced guys, that, uh, most of which have less than two years in the military. Uh, some guys have less than a year. Who's next? Yeah. Come on, Kirk. Come on. Kirk. You have some get up there. Sergeant Scott Russell is a patient, though somewhat profane, instructor. Get in your fucking order and come down. I'm sending two guys around that corner at a time, all right? I'm the third guy in the order of merch, so I'm going to come out and start buying it, all right? They don't have much time to get the replacements up to speed. Okay, now start picking up your spacing. Open space right. Okay, open space clear. Guys have been through a lot, and guys that uh, have got pretty close. So coming in as replacement, it's uh, it's hard, you know. We gotta we gotta try and make that brotherhood as well, and then we gotta do it in a short period of time because we're getting thrown right to the fire. You're the number two. You're gonna take the bomb, obviously, hold it in the tip of your hand. You can just let go, drop it gently. As soon as you drop it, you're gonna bring your hand around and down. So you get it out the way quickly. If you don't get it out of the way quickly, 
you're going to be losing fingers because when that bomb shoots out, it's going to take a thumb or a finger with it. I've never been in it. I, I've never been in what everybody calls the shit. I don't know if you can put that on camera or not, but I've never been in anything like that, so it's hard to say if I'm ready. Uh, I'm as ready as, uh, as I can be. If something did go off a car bomb and that, you're going to lose a couple guys, but that's, you always lose somebody. And that, that brings the point why it's important to have your point man. He's the guy that has to approach the vehicle. Somebody has to take the risk, and he's the sacrificial lamb. How many in the vehicle? Can't really prepare for it, really. <laughs> you can tell him what's going to happen. You're going to be like just mentally prepared, but things go down and people die. And how do you prepare for that, really? The last time 8 Platoon was on television, it was a rap ceremony on the news. In October, they are still nursing wounds and memories of a month ago, Panjoy, where they fought in Operation Medusa. When I turned around, my buddy Keegan was standing there in the air gunner's hatch, just covered in blood, so I asked him what was up. He just looked at me and said, Kushle. I asked if it was uh, good to go. He said no, but you know, you don't have time to mourn for it right there. You got a job to do. Turned around, kept doing what I had to do. Not easy. Uh, my warrant, Mellish, uh, he was the best warrant I've ever had. Probably, and hopefully not, the best warrant I'll ever have, but uh, one of the last things he said to one of the fellows before uh, things, before his unfortunate incident uh, was, behold this line, don't give an inch. Today's payback day, boys, we're gonna get him. And uh, he walked off to make sure his friend was okay or to see what he could do. And that was the, the last time we saw our war. Oh. Making a jump! Medusa was the biggest battle Canadians have been in since Korea. Eight platoon was in the thick of it. Then the next morning, the platoon was strafed by an American plane, an A-10 Warthog. They were literally gunned down in friendly fire. Same time. Same time. So I was out there brushing my teeth with uh, my Master Corporal Bellamy, and I saw two of those little sparks go. I knew instantly what it was. Uh, ran and dove into the back of the lav. The Master Corporal quick on his feet as well, and he dove in as well. If the Taliban was a water bottle. Uh, fortunately for me, and unfortunately for him, he landed on top of me and took a couple hits for me. But that's what Master Corporals do, I guess. Thompson got some, Mitch got some, I got some. A lot like all, pretty well everybody in our platoon got some. I got hit in both triceps and then in the face here. And I just got two shrapnel in my back. About 16 injured, not more. One KIA, Private Graham. The Crazy Eights became famous. Warriors one day, decimated the next. I, I think no company has been affected in the such a, since the Korean War. Um, yeah, we were rendered ineffective, uh, combat ineffective, and uh, out of my platoon there was eight of us fit for redeployment. Let's the lighter. Focus with those first. Hot in okay? Hot blank. In battle you depend on the guy beside you. They've got to get to know each other. Cody. Cody? Guys, eh? Mike. We got Cody. You're fucking picked by, uh, what's your name? Fergie. Fergie, you're on Fergie's team. I got Reed too then. Reed? Yeah. Who's Reed? Right Roof. <laughs> this was a platoon that prided itself in its cohesiveness, teamwork. But the replacements are untested. Still, the replacements are beating the older guys at foosball much to the frustration of John Bellamy. He's the master corporal who jumped into the back of the lab and took the shrapnel heading for Private Keegan. He didn't want to be interviewed, then challenged me to a game of chess. As we plot the movement of knights and pawns, he relives the horrible morning of the A-10 attack. The guy who died, everybody speaks very highly of. Mm -hmm. The Olympic uh, athlete? Yeah, Mark Graham. He was a very good soldier. 
he uh, will definitely be missed. One of the guys said it was pretty interesting for all the, the near misses because, you know, an inch left or right or a centimeter left or right and he would have been dead, but there's so many cases of that, it was unbelievable. Well, you're case in point. Yeah. Mm -hmm. the, uh, the piece of shrapnel traveled in my back through the muscle and is uh, apparently pretty close to my spine at L3, buried in amongst some nerves. So that they left it in because they said it'd uh, do more damage taking it out than it would leaving it in. So you got a souvenir of Panjway. Mm -hmm. I would have liked to have taken a different type of souvenir home, but you know, take what you can get, I suppose. God, I'm stupid. Foolish moves. I'd take it. It's, it's a gift. <laughs> Don't expect it again. <laughs> These young kids are ready? Not even close. The new ones that we just got? Yeah. Nobody can prepare you for uh, some of the things that you're going to see out there. Throwing your dead friend in the back of your boat. How do you prepare for somebody for that, you know? You can't. We know we will be going to Panjoy soon. We just don't know when.